Ene dokje kukje do, ene dokje kukje do, da to kukje do, da to kukje do, beje dokje kjae kapon do, beje dokje kjae kapon do. Ene dokje kukje do, ene dokje kukje do, da to kukje do, da to kukje do, beje kja kapon do, beje dokje kapon do. The words say this is God's book. It is a gospel book. We should put it inside our hearts. Aho. Aho. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're thankful and grateful for your words. Words that have been captured by a book. Some call it the Bible. We are thankful and grateful for your word and your word which calls us unto discipleship. And Father, we are thankful that at this time we now gather around your word. We, O oh God, ask that you would hide me behind your dear cross, that we all may hear what you desire for us to hear at this time. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Our lesson today comes from the gospel according to John, um, the first chapter um, of which we read uh, the 43rd chapter through the 51st chapter for this morning's New Testament lectionary uh, reading. Uh, we want to hover on about the 46 through the 48 verses of uh, the passage. And this is taken from the New International Version translation of our Bible, and it reads as such. Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Nathaniel asked. Come and see, said Philip. Verse 47, uh, when Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said to him, here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Underline that some of your translations may say guile, no guile. Um, and then verse 48, how do you know me, Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you for just a few more moments. We like to share words around this thought uh, of fig tree discipleship. Hmm. Say that with me, a fig tree discipleship. Hmm. Uh, Jesus, beginning his earthly ministry, public ministry, uh, called others to follow him more intimately. Mm -hmm. And they had become to uh, known as, as what we call them, the disciples, apostles, the, the ones more intimate. And, and here Jesus had, had called Andrew, then Philip, and uh, well, then Peter, then Philip, and then Philip went uh, to call his friend, his close associate, Nathaniel. Nathaniel, Nathaniel. It's a name that you may not find anywhere else when there is a listing of the original disciples, the close. Uh, associates or those who would be following Jesus, uh, uh, the Synoptic Gospels does not list uh, uh, a Nathaniel. 
And if I were teaching uh, the Seeds of Faith or the Silver Feathers, that would be your homework, uh, then, then why Nathaniel is not listed? Perhaps uh, uh, it is referring to another disciple with uh, uh, another name. And, and most theologians uh, and, and historians would, would say that that disciple would be Bartholomew. So if you are uh, looking for that name, uh, we're giving you that free, okay? Uh, but uh, Nathaniel appears to be the same uh, person uh, named Bartholomew in the Synoptic Gospels of Matthew, uh, Mark, and Luke. Amen. Amen. Uh, here we, we have as a fig tree uh, discipleship uh, coming where uh, Nathaniel or Bartholomew uh, had been reading or studying uh, the scriptures, uh, meditating on the scriptures. And it was an idiom back then, particularly for rabbis in the Hebrew tradition that uh, studying the the scriptures was considering being sitting under the fig tree where there was time set aside where one would uh, sit under a tree, preferably a fig tree, which in back in those days of an antiquity uh, simulated some type of prosperity, okay? Uh, but you would sit under a fig tree or a tree and meditate, study the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Also, under the same fig tree, folk would gather, particularly the men folk, okay, and discuss uh, as part of their study of the scriptures. And to them, in that time, it was the Hebrew Bible, which is now our Old Testament scripture. So a fig tree type of disciple would suggest that it is derived from the study of or the med meditation of God's word. Mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and we see that uh, this Nathaniel and Philip had been searching the scriptures had been studying the scriptures, had been meditating on the scriptures in their search for the Messiah. The scriptures of Moses and the prophets would give indication uh, or foretelling of the coming of the Messiah and the signs thereof. And we see that when Philip encountered the Lord and was called, he then said, ah, I, I got a friend, I got an associate, I've got a close brother that I need to go and, and, and uh, tell uh, about this Christ. And he did so when you read in the previous verse uh, that, that we've found this Messiah, this Jesus from Nazareth. And Nathaniel at the 46th verse said, Nazareth? Mm, Nazareth was not a place that Philip or Nathaniel thought that the true Messiah would come from. Uh, many would say that uh, Nathaniel had some prejudices about him, just this a uh, statement. Can anything good come from there? Sure, Nazareth was located in the Galilean area of which Nathaniel was part of that area. Nathaniel actually came from the town of Cana, which was in Galilee. So, so, so 
Nathaniel said, can anything good come from that which on the surface would say he had some prejudices? Yes, and he may have, of which we all do. Hmm. We all do. And he said, anything come, anything of greater good, or uh, the one that we've been looking for come from Nazareth, because the scripture said he would come from Bethlehem, just like David did, right? And, 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 and I believe that's what Philip was uh, uh, getting at. I mean, uh, Nathaniel was getting at when he said, can anything good come from there? And if not, we should not uh, be so critical of Nathaniel in that statement because we all have some prejudices about us. Mm. And, and, and whether or not we have a mask on to hide our prejudices or we uh, hide behind some facade of appearing to be this person who loves everybody and all of that that goes along with having deceit or guile about us. Hmm? Then, then we need to check ourselves about that. Hmm? That, that, that. That when Jesus saw uh, Nathaniel approaching him, uh, Jesus started speaking directly to what Nathaniel had been experiencing uh, without all of the mask on, without all of the cunning, without all the deception uh, that we may tried to hide behind. And he saw Nathaniel as he was. Hmm? Even if he uh, had just a slight bit of prejudice, it's enough to cause, and, 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 and we can see how a little makes a lot, whereas a little bit of leaven leavens the whole lump with just a little thought of someone being better than someone else or some place being better than the other place, then, then, then we can see how there becomes a mob mentality when you have such little influence or little prejudice that grows into something that's uncontrollable. Hmm? But we should not be so critical of persons who have prejudice, prejudices uh, in us. And, and, and Martha Luther King's vision or view or dream of the beloved community, there is a blending of all types of characters, all types of views and worldviews. But the common thread is for the good of everybody, that everybody. Hmm, is made in the image of God and have intrinsic value that God is a part of that human representation of God's creation in us. And it is flawed. We all are flawed. Maybe you may think that you are not prejudiced or flawed or quote unquote maybe you think you're perfect, then this sermon is not for you. I would remind you, however, if you would hmm, look at Mark, uh, this, uh, the second chapter, verse 27, Jesus said that hmm, he did not come here. He's not calling uh, those who are well, those who are righteous, uh, but he came here for the sick, for those who are flawed, for those who are perfect, need no physician. But Jesus came so that those who would be his followers, hmm, these people are sick. I'm sick. You are sick. But Jesus wants us to follow him. Jesus wants wherever we are 
in our sicknesses, in our frailties, in our shortcomings, Jesus still wants us to follow him. Mm -hmm. when, when, when he saw Nathaniel, he saw the contents of Nathaniel's heart that under the fig tree that he was meditating on God's word and God's word penetrated his heart and pulled back the veil of who Nathaniel thought he was. And he saw clearly who God thought he was. And God showed him so that when Nathaniel approached Jesus, Jesus said, yes, you have no guile. You have no deceit. There's no deception about yourselves that yes, you have flaws. Yes, you have shortcomings. Yes, you may have prejudice. Yes, you have unforgiveness. Yes, you may have whatever that is that is not perfect in the sight of God. But yet, I want you to follow me. Hmm, think about that. God still wants us to follow him, that God wants us to follow him regardless of how we have failed, how we have hated, how we have fallen short of the glory of God. God still wants us because God loves us even in spite of ourselves. Hmm? That the word of God knows us better than we know ourselves. And then when we come to play on the word of God in Hebrews 4 and 12 and 13, it says the word of God, Jesus is the word of God. Hmm? It's quick and powerful. It's like a two-edged sword dividing uh, spirit and soul, dividing uh, marrow and bone, and is able to discern even the contents of a person's heart, that, that nothing is hidden from God. Hmm? And, and, and when, Phila, when, when Nathaniel realized that this person from Nazareth, this Christ, from Nazareth could read his heart, could know him just as he was. Nathaniel then declared, yes, you are the son of God. It gives us such a lesson that no matter where we are in life, no matter what we've done in life, God knows us. And in that knowing, God still loves us and desires for us to be God's followers, to be a part of God's family. No matter what sin we have committed, and for me, no matter what sins I have committed, Jesus still wants us to follow him that we have a fig tree mentality about us, that we study God's word that convicts us, that encourages us, that teaches us, that guides us, and that we're willing to do that. And sometimes we will fail. Sometimes we will rebel. But even in spite of that, God wants us to follow. Yes, yes, we're not perfect. None of us, hmm? and, 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 but we are striving to be what God desires for us to be. That no matter where we are on the spectrum of who we think we are in terms of true disciples of God, whether we act that out, think that out, hope that out, or whatever it may be, that Jesus still wants us. He died for the thief on the left, just like he died for the thief on the right. He died for those who are in the street. He died for the white supremacists, just like he died for those who lost their lives in innocence. That God wants all of us to follow him. And if we should follow him with this fig tree type of view, 
the yes, the word of God reveals the dirty contents of our hearts. He reveals all of the things that are not made perfect by us, that we are not right with God as we should be. If we do still follow Jesus, by and by, he will shape us and mold us and make us into the person that he wants us to be. If we have a fig tree mentality that says, yes, I don't want to deceive myself or others anymore. No, no, no. I want to pull off the mask, whereas I am smiling in your face and want to stab you in the back. That I am saying, oh, yes, you are my brother or my sister, but at the same time, you want to destroy me. Yes, let's pull off that mask. Let the Holy Spirit, the word of God, which knows our heart, convict us and then still invites us to follow, to be a part of God's holy communion. That your sins are forgiven. That we have an opportunity, though we have made many mistakes up until this point, we have an opportunity to follow Christ going forward. And as the children's messenger this morning, that he is calling each of us by our name, that he knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows that sometimes we are hateful. He knows that sometimes we are doubtful. He knows that sometimes we are contrary, but yet he says, follow me. Yet he wants us apart of him. Yet we who are a wretch and all undone, that his grace is sufficient. Hmm? That we would have a fig tree discipleship about us, that we are crystal clear, transparent, as not being hypocritical, that we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But thanks be to God, he continues to call us into a fig tree discipleship. Amen and amen. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Yes. The The cross before me. The cross before me. No turning back. The cross before me. No turning back.
let the church say amen. Let us say amen again. Amen. Amen. Let me stop this. Okay.